Hi guys, welcome back to the Cocktails and Culture podcast with myself, Brigitte R.A. And I'm Benjamin Coy. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome back, y'all. Happy New Year, first of all. Yes, happy 2024. Happy this yes. is the year of alignment, of mm-hmm. prosperity, of all those things. So I hope your year is going well. How are you feeling, Brigitte? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling blessed. Honey, you look good. Thank you. You're glowing. You know, I try. I feel it. Yes. Um, but you know, this year has been going good so far. Um, but I have I have a good feeling. I have a good yeah, feeling. I hope too. that it is very amazing for everyone it is. and myself included. So yeah. I'm excited. I'm going to continue to speak that into yes. the year because last year we spoke it the entire January and yes. baby 2023 took off. Ooh. So we're going to do that same uh, that same equation that same method this time. Yes. Okay, yes. we're yes. speaking yes. again alignment, prosperity, elevation, determination, dedication, all those Asians. All the things. And yeah. we wish that for you guys, of course, as Period. well. Of course. So yes. So, today we have a really special guest from very, Bravo's very Summer special. House, Martha's Vineyard. So, this show follows a group of 12 friends as they enjoy their island getaway with beach parties, decadent dinners, and summer hookups. With both fun and drama in store for some young back professionals and entrepreneurs. So, joining us today from the cast, we have Preston Mitchum, who is a black and queer civil rights a- advocate, a public speaker, a writer, and professional hailing all the way from Ohio, but residing in the nation's capital. Okay, so, help us welcome Preston Mitchum. Yeah. How are you feeling? How are you? What are you calling into your year for 2024? Oh my God, I'm caught a lot of intention. Yes. yes. A lot of focus, a lot of intention. All of that. All yeah. those things. Well, we're so happy to have you here. I'm Thank happy to be here. for joining us. I'm happy to be here. Um, but of course, this is the Cocktails and Culture podcast. Yes. Before we get into in, before we get into the culture, yes. we have to introduce the podcast or the cocktail, cocktail. Yes. of the episode. Yes. So today we are drinking Via Ray Prosecco. And we have some cran mango juice. So cran mango mimosa. Yes, a little, so let's get a little taste. A little Ooh. something, a little spritz. A little, spritz. A little brunch cocktail, y'all. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Mm-hmm. Very, very good. Very refreshing. That's refreshing. Very refreshing. So yes. make sure, of course. Of course, if you try this drink at home, be sure to tag us and let us know what you thought. Uh, and shout out to Issa Rae. Love yeah, you, girl. Girl sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> so, getting right to it, opening it right up. You have such a story of endurance, triumph, joy, love, all mm. these things. So, take us back to your journey in Ohio, getting yes. to DC, and now getting to where you are now. What's what has that been like? You know, the thing I always say is my life has not been a crystal stair, and I'm just appreciative that. I'm where I am today. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I am a lawyer, but my life certainly did not start <laughs> as a lawyer. Mm-hmm. You know, I grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, eventually moved to Dayton, Ohio. So I live both in the north and the southern parts of Ohio, which is really black as hell. Yeah, I, <laughs> think, yeah. I think a lot of people really think Ohio may be just like majority white everywhere. Mm-hmm. Not where I'm from. It's not <laughs> it is. Very much 90, 95% black in my cities oh, wow. that I grew up in. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, just experienced a lot. I experienced a family who really worked hard but didn't have much of anything. And it kind of made me resent some things growing up. And I think, like, later in life I've learned to, like, lean into a little bit of grace and love, um, recognizing that people did the best that they could do, mm-hmm. even when it harmed me at times. Um, and then eventually I moved to – went to Kent State University in Ohio – Then went to North Carolina Central for law school and moved to D.C. Mm -hmm. to get what's called an LLM. Mm -hmm. It's really just called more student loan debt. But (laughs) honestly, (laughs) that's really what it is. Uh, Cancel them loans. But but then I stayed after a job offer and just kind of leaned into a lot of more of my activist roots, my legal roots, Mm -hmm. and eventually on TV. Yeah, look at that. that. Look how God really ordered your steps. That Mm. is so beautiful. Mm. I Don't get me started on that, please. Yeah, that's not preach today. But no, I love right. that. I love these these past couple of months have been so big for us. Like just thinking about mm-hmm. themes in life, yeah. um, and really looking back and saying, giving people grace. Yes. Um, and one episode we had last season, we were talking about like just giving our parents more grace mm-hmm. because they really were just doing and are continuing to do what they think is best, what they know to be best. And so I'm, I'm in that same space with you as well. We're yeah. giving people. Giving them that grace. And yeah. I always say they were literally just regular humans like we yes. were, and they had a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Had a baby. <laughs> you know, I can't lie. Y'all probably are a little bit further than I am about it because I still struggle with what that balance looks like, yeah. right? Oh, I because that, at the end of the day, right? I mean, because yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, you know, they're ordinary people. A lot of times we do look at them as superheroes when we're younger. 
And at the same time, it's like your best still caused me harm. Yeah. So what exactly. do I do with yes. that? Exactly. Right? No, I so agree. Holding that both end is very difficult. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's been what's helped is forgiving. Yeah. Um, that, though, took a long time. <laughs> so let's be real there. Yeah. But what helped was just like forgiving and then realizing that, again, going to about a t- intention. Mm -hmm. I don't think, well, in some cases, or at least in my case, it was not an intentional thing. Right. Um, And so that has made the sting a little better. Mm -hmm. But like you said, even though your intentions were great, it still did hurt. And so Mm -hmm. we're holding that, and there's nothing wrong with it. Two things can be true at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Holding things in tension, I think, is a beautiful thing. Exactly. Exactly. And forgiving for you. Yes. Yes. Not for anyone anyone else. else. For you. Yes. And I think that makes all the difference. So now that you've amassed a a following on a regular series, um, Summer House Martha Vineyard, you're an entrepreneur, an activist, a speaker, an attorney. Come on, resume. Yes. (laughs) It's stacked, baby. Yes. Um, You always seem quite grounded. We kind of seen that through the show, I would say. And so what it was the glue that kind of kept you together through all of this? Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna get that next season from me, but Uh-oh. <laughs> I know that's right. Hey, we'll get into that. Okay, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Not all the time, at least. But you know what? I realize I am a pretty rational person usually. Yes. Mm-hmm. So even though I love to have fun, love to turn up, drink, etc., mm-hmm. like I just don't like a lot of people just yelling. Like that's yes. yeah. frankly the homes I kind of grew up in, the environments I grew up in, and it makes me retreat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so usually that's what it is. Like season one, it was so wild because everyone was so crazy that it was mm-hmm. like, okay, somebody got to be the same one here. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Somebody. You, that, you, you definitely anchor. gave that though. You, you gave, gave like, anchor. the last yeah. episode, like, okay, let's think this through. Yeah. Yes. It was now, very, what are really the ins and outs of this? Yes. yes. It's very much like, do you hear yourself? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> because that's what it was. most of the time people are just looking to win an argument mm-hmm. and yeah. they both wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, what do we do with this? Yeah, exactly. But what helped me stay grounded all the time, I think really is the spirit of activism Mm -hmm. the whole thing about activism it's not just yelling in the streets it is not just raising your fist which we're gonna do all that too it's really about figuring out asking the question first what is the goal here Mm -hmm. yes like at the end of the day after we finish this disagreement where do we leave this conversation Mm -hmm. and if your goal is just to be right which that is some people's goals yeah at the end of the day, I don't want to take part of that. Yeah. Exactly. But then there are other times where you're like, I actually have an issue that mm-hmm. you're causing, and so how do we actually discuss this in a way that may be a little healthy, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we on TV, <laughs> right? Exactly. So that's just the reality of it, too. But what keeps me grounded at the end of the day really is just figuring out ultimately what the goal is. Right. Yeah, I, I love, love that, because sometimes people will argue to just get their point across and yes. not actually listening to yes. like what the conversation is, like my feelings and mm-hmm. how I feel. You yeah. know? So that's super important. And along with that, you said in, I think, one of the first or second episodes, and I love it, it's stuck in my brain so long, you're being contrary, not just to be, not just for contrary mm. sake, but to actually make people think. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. I love that because I'm also that person that's like, okay, let's really weigh our options. And mm. I'm not doing it because I want to be difficult. I'm doing it because we really do want to think on a higher level. So, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that. it's a, sometimes it's difficult to know what the difference is sometimes, mm-hmm. right? But I'm like, if y'all know me enough, which yeah. a lot of us are friends on our show. So mm-hmm. I'm like, if you know me enough, you know I'm not just being yeah. like a jerk. Right. right, I'm actually or asking you questions to make you think, mm-hmm. because let's be clear, we know we have some friends who just just be going off the ledge. We all do, and it's like, what are you, <laughs> yep. what are you talking about, friend? <laughs> like, well, yes, sit them down, <laughs> and friend. it's fine, let's be real. right? We all have different, we all have different roles to play in our friendships. Yes. Yeah. and I've always realized I have been the no friend, the con- mm-hmm. like the contrarian friend. Not again, not to mm-hmm. be contrarian, yeah. just because. Because, you know, it's like, did you think about that? Yeah. Right. You may not have. So mm-hmm. let's take a pause, take a beat, and just yeah. let's think. Honest. Now, you've already alluded to it just a little bit, but let's switch <laughs> gears and go to your work with activism. Yeah. Your work with PDM Consulting. Yeah. What was, I'd say, first of all, what got you interested in this field? What was, Ooh. like, your North Star? And then um, what has been the most rewarding part of your work I to date? That. So I have, the truth of the matter is what really got me into activism was my own experience with sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think once I experienced that, quite frankly, repeatedly from a family member, it made me kind of be a shell into myself. Mm -hmm. And it made me be a little bit quieter, more reserved, and just kind of not really, not being, I think, in touch with the real world. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, when I was going to therapy when I was really young, yeah. Like 11, 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, so people talk about it now, and I'm like, I'm closer God, to 40. Yeah. And I'm like, this has been decades of my life. I'm um, just really unpacking, really learning and then unlearning a lot of things that I've been through. 
And I think after a while, I was like, this is not healthy for me. And I have to be, frankly, the most annoying, loud version of myself mm -hmm. in order for people, for, my, for me to take myself seriously, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but in order to be respected by other people. And so I think everything that I started to do just started being about the body, right? Like even when I teach, most of what I teach is about the body, bodily autonomy, bodily integrity. So everything that I started doing is around like, police violence because why people are violating the body mm -hmm. around abortion access why because the state is violating the body mm -hmm. right around lgbtq autonomy because the state again is violating the body so everything to me became about the body mm -hmm. and the law at the end of the day will truly harm you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet if you let it yeah. and if you don't have activists who are really pushing back on the ground about it at all times mm -hmm. and so that's really what got me involved in activism mm -hmm. I think PDM Consulting, what got me involved was me being sick of nonprofits, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Was me being so sick of leadership mm -hmm. who were more threatened by blackness in places, mm -hmm. um, despite us being the ones who churn out and bring in the money. Mm -hmm. And I just got exhausted. Yeah. You know, I really started the company because I was just sick mm -hmm. of working for other people. Yeah. And it may not be forever, mm -hmm. but right. I know right now it makes the most sense in my life. And I've been yeah. able to contribute a lot um, especially when I landed my first big contract working with a mental health organization, I was like, this is, mm -hmm. this is it. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> so, you know, things have been really good so far. I love that. I love that. First of all, thank you for what you shared on the platform mm -hmm. at Martha's Venue. Thank you for what you're sharing here. Thank you for bringing that in. Um, I agree that the body is very important. Mm -hmm. um, my grandma says all the time that the body, your body is your temple. Mm -hmm. um, and so thank you for fighting for those protections yeah, okay. and fighting for, to keep those things safe yeah. and autonomous. Um, and I love, I just, I'm very appreciative of your work as so many people are yeah. thank you. Um, continuously. So yeah. I just thank wanted you. to bring that into the Yeah, thank you so well. much. No, for that, that means a lot. Thank yeah, you. Cause that definitely will help so many people yeah. and just get them to be like, yeah. more serious about mental health mm -hmm. and just like really checking in with yourself dealing with your trauma yeah. and all that is super super important so now i do have yeah. one quick follow-up too before we head on so i'm also in this activism space as well i love advocating for my community and all the intersections that i represent so and i've always been asking this to all of the activist people that i that i have come in contact with amid all that we're going through yeah literally how do you keep your joy like Ooh. what keeps you waking up? What keeps putting? What keeps the car moving when gas is four ninety nine? Yeah. What keeps you going? <laughs> like it's expensive what? out here, y'all. But like, what, what what does keep what keeps you going? Oh, that is a good question. Oh my god, I don't know if I fully know the answer to that yet. I think every day the answer changes, yeah. right? Yeah. Sometimes it is my dog. Sometimes it's my man. Sometimes it's like more theoretically, like the yeah. liberation of black folks, yeah. like. I and, and sometimes it's crab legs because for people who yeah, follow me know period. I love a crab leg. We love a good crab <laughs> leg, so. we, and we have been we itching love. to get some. So <laughs> let me know if I need to give you a call. Baby, right? Yeah, let me tell you. Yeah. So, so that answer changes every day, and a lot of times it depends on how I go to bed. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like sometimes I can go to bed watching Drag Race. Sometimes I can go to bed watching Law and Order SVU. Which get into that too, yeah. actually, <laughs> that last season or this yes. new oh season. Oh my but yes. god, mm -hmm. yes. But so the answer really changes, and I'm real. I'm actually finally okay with that. Yeah. Like, I used to want to have the best answer in the world yeah. to that. Like, mm -hmm. ooh, liberation, freedom. Yes. I'm like, actually, not really sometimes. Because yeah. <laughs> exactly. joy comes in so many different ways. Yeah. Like, it comes in so many different pockets, so many different, I ain't got a pocket, got a pocket full of sunshine. <laughs> 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 not about that song. But, yeah, it comes in so many different ways. And so I agree. Maybe mm -hmm. there is not one source. It's just all of it. Like, yeah. yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree because sometimes, a lot of times when you ask that question, it's like people expect that you're going to have this, like, I meditate and yes. I do this and it's just like baby it is what it is it like is I just figure it, it out uh -huh. you know and that's like yeah. the real life answer no. like, it, like you literally just figure it out day by day yeah and yeah. sometimes you get a schedule going for yourself that's yes. good but you will never hear me say meditation why because I don't meditate right <laughs> right. <laughs> I pray I but pray. I'm like you know right. I ain't about to hum <laughs> any day any day I get uncomfortable myself yeah. with right. the silence in the room <laughs> I would, I've, I've, I've tried to meditate before and I love mm -hmm. it but I fall asleep so easily it was such a I love that you love though. it. What made you love it? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll be trying. I really do. But I'll be like, I am actually bored. I don't know if I do like the <laughs> actual um, meditation, but I do listen to the Janae um, Aiko um, trigger protection ma mantra thing. Mm. Oh, the sound. But it's just like a sound bath yeah. type situation. Oh, and you just, I, I just let it pray. Like if, if I need to just 
calm myself down a little bit, yeah. then I'll let that play. And it's just, it's not, I'm not sitting there like, I'm just yeah. Yeah. relaxing and just yeah. letting me like be in my thoughts and just like relax yes. my mind. I didn't yes. know she did that actually. Yeah, yeah she has, but I've been thinking her... of drinking and driving and her no. other hits. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> she... no. Go ahead, girl. But actually, all of her music, she incorporates yeah. sound bath and like sh- all of yeah. her songs. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. even if it's a song about a relationship, some like whatever, like it all it's is incorporated. That's so that's yeah. why it's very calming. Her, a lot of her music yeah. is very calming. So I use that i do i i just like to get back into the body because i'm very in my head yeah. all yes. the time um and i have thoughts that run and they run, yeah. and they yeah. run Same. honey so meditating for me helps me bring calm those down, down calm those down get back in myself and then move forward I sometimes i pray that. during the meditation sometimes Absolutely. i fall asleep or just yeah. let the body do what the body does but um i yeah. actually love i may i may try to touch base the Give one thing my too. friends do accuse me one. see the one mm-hmm. thing my friends accuse me of which you're right is I can tell a story, baby. I'm going so many different directions in this story, and I'm like, <laughs> me too. And, and, and conclusion. <laughs> and you know what? And in. by the way, right. they're like, well, you got there. At least you got there. Right. <laughs> I'm like, and then she said, well, "What was I talking about?" Right. And don't forget that part too. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Mind you, <laughs> best, best black transition yes. phrase. <laughs> so, Preston, you have been like a leading example of how important representation is. So, who are some of like the leading folks and pillars in your life that kind of you know, motivated you and got you Mm. the honor, really, um, representation. Oh, my gosh. So, like, you have people who are clearly, like, icons who I really look up to, Mm -hmm. the James Baldwin's, the Byron Mm -hmm. Rustin's, Mm -hmm. the Marsha P. Johnson's. I think in my actual life, though, some people are George Garçon or George Johnson Mm -hmm. or Garçon, uh, Twiggy Poochie Garçon. I'm in the house of Garçon, so Mm -hmm. just... um, uh, who else? Angelica Roz mm-hmm. has been a brilliant yeah. person. Gabriel Maldonado, who does a lot of work in HIV activism. Mm-hmm. Um, my gosh, there's actually Hari Ziad, mm-hmm. who is an author. Uh, so many, Darnell Moore, who's an author. <laughs> like, yeah. there's so many people in my personal life who is, no matter what, right, I've mm-hmm. always reached out to them. It could be a year, and I'm like, hey, I need to talk to you about something. They're like, hey, pick up the phone, what's up? Yeah. yeah. And because they know if I'm reaching out, it's for a reason. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, and I really appreciate that. But George but George Johnson is probably number one on that list for me because, you know, they're my very, very best friends. I'm a little biased. But, and George is a person who, I mean, for folks who don't know, George, you know, he's, uh, they are, excuse me, pardon me, the New York Times bestseller of All Boys Aren't Blue, has written since one or two of the books since then. But believe it or not, I got George into writing. And I will never forget because they share this story actually in part of their first book, mm-hmm. um, which was about like when they came to me. I had an article published in Ebony magazine. Mm-hmm. This is some years ago. And they were like, I really want to start writing. And I'm like, well, baby, right. That's all I said mm-hmm. was right. Mm-hmm. And then literally years later, get mm-hmm. million dollar book deals. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and they always talk about it in a way that says, like, you really helped me to start that. And I'm just like, well, honestly, your writing saved my life, regardless of me starting to write before you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that is a beautiful thing. So anytime that I look for inspiration in terms of writing, I started my book proposal recently. I always think of my best friend because I've just seen how much they have navigated this space mm-hmm. and seemingly probably in the public eye in an easy way, but it has not been easy at all for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really appreciate them all the time. Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely giving George their flowers as well. Like, mm-hmm. All Boys Aren't Blue definitely came in a space, came in a time where I was in a space that was just like, needing some joy, mm-hmm. needing yeah. something, needing to be seen, needing to be represented. And so that book definitely did a lot for me, as mm-hmm. did the following one, which yeah. my grandmother loves. Oh, um, my gosh. We, yeah. are not, we are not broken. Yeah, we are not broken. Um, so, yeah, I yeah. shout out to George. Yeah. And Angelica. I yeah. wish y'all see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So shout out to her. No, look. Um, <laughs> but, yes, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I love, I always say, like, having your chosen family. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's yes. so important because, oh and gosh. just being kind because mm-hmm. you never know what you can say to someone. Like, you just mm-hmm. telling them that you should be – you should write. Like, yeah. you want to do it, do it. Yeah. And the little things that your friends or family or just somebody you meet on the street can say to you can be life-changing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I love that, that you guys both got something out of that. Thank yeah. you. And I've struggled with that for a while in terms of family. Like, I don't have the closest relationship to my biological family. Mm-hmm. And so other than maybe my sisters and a couple other family members, just haven't really ever been close. That's yeah. just not the dynamic of our family. And so... You know, I'm like, I could, I can wrestle with this. I can sit with this. I can be uncomfortable in it. Or I can create that family yes. that will be there for me yes. in ways that I don't have to beg other mm-hmm. family exactly. members to be there for me. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so, so important. That's so, so, so important. important. I, I've yeah. learned that yeah. <laughs> this past month. Mm-hmm. That's how mm-hmm. important 
chosen family, chosen community, your friends are because of that reason and because of just meeting people around you that know what you're going through, can relate in many ways. Mm -hmm. And we can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. alone. Especially when you move away from home. Mm -hmm. Especially. Or even if you don't have a relationship, like you said, it's like when you move away and it's like you have to create your people. Like you You have to create those people around you. Because I, like, listen, I can't do it alone. Mm -mm. I need my people to just... We always talk about, like, even if we're having a bad day, and it's like, girl, yeah. let's just hang out. Mm-hmm. Let's just do nothing. And it helps. That can just, that literally helps so much. Yeah. Doing nothing around someone is sometimes the oh best God. things I've done. The best. Yes. Best. Best. We ain't got to like, go you nowhere. doing good? Okay. You doing right. good. I'm doing my own little thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing your thing, but we're just here. We're just yeah. here we're together. Here. I agree. Yes, that's mm-hmm. so important. Love. So along with that, or also switching gears with that, um, you've been very vocal about how this platform that you have now is not just a vehicle of information. Mm-hmm. I think in an ABC Audio interview you said that actually I think I have the actual quote. I don't think reality TV stops at the doorsteps of light shade. I think it's an opportunity for amplification of culture, ideas, and experiences. Mm-hmm. Which I also agree and that's mm-hmm. one one reason why I love reality TV. Mm-hmm. Um, but how has this platform helped you with that mission, helped you vocalize, helped you amplify that mission? Um, and where do you see it going in the future? I think in many ways, you know, one when I was discussing that interview in particular, it, or I was in the interview I just started to really reflect on a lot of reality TV shows that I love Mm -hmm. and the issues that they actually talk about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not going to watch a reality show where it's just all fighting. That's just, it's uncomfortable for me. I'm like, there's no depth here. Not that we Mm -hmm. need to be sitting here solving for parabolas, but like, there needs to be like (laughs) something right in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think of like certain examples where I would hear people discuss death of their children Mm -hmm. or police violence, or there was an abortion one time on an Mm -hmm. episode of Love and Hip Hop, right? Mm -hmm. And, And so like, I... I was like, why do people just, like, talk about reality TV like it's just drama? Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm like, probably because you're missing the real moments Mm -hmm. because it is few and far between the drama. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to just pay attention to, like, the real moments that are happening. And let's face it, our lives have drama, too. Right? Like, it's just real. Mm -hmm. So I think for... It's interesting, right? Because the first experience that I had on reality TV was obviously Summer House Martha's Vineyard, mm-hmm. but it was specifically around my critique of black excellence. Mm-hmm. And I think, and I, and I, I, I'll admit, I have talked about black excellence or being against it, frankly, the concept for a long time on social media. And when I got into the house, someone just happened to say it like 17 times. Mm-hmm. And I said, I could sound like I'm preaching on Twitter. <laughs> Or <laughs> this is just an opportunity to say, shut up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. because it's just starting to annoy me. <laughs> like, we are drinking liquor, talking yeah. about to black excellence. I'm like, mm-hmm. what? Yeah. What does that mean at this point then? Mm-hmm. So, you know, that is why I, I was like, I can be quiet in this moment. Or I know that I'm smart enough to understand what the producers oftentimes are thinking. Mm-hmm. What will make edit, won't, won't make edit. And it just made sense to use it in that moment yeah. to amplify the things that I know people are talking about yeah. at brunch, at happy hours, mm-hmm. with their friends. Mm-hmm. It's like, if not, then I'm missing an opportunity, Absolutely. right? And to be clear, that really is me. Like, I am sometimes the agitator in spaces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so it's like, if not now, then when, right. Right. right? And so I think we can use it as an opportunity to discuss things that matter to us. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it may not be the smartest decision, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is. You know, I care a lot about issues around us. I care a lot around Palestine. Mm -hmm. I do. I care a lot about abortion. I do. I care a lot about SCOTUS, or I hate them, but I, you know, Mm -hmm. we we need them. We need them. Unfortunately. Um, Right? So I, I, there are issues I care about that I think most people were like, why are you on a reality show talking about these issues? And I'm like, because no one on the reality show is talking about these issues. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I right. feel like when you spoke up about different issues on the show, it didn't, to me at least, it didn't feel like, oh, why is he talking about this? I feel like mm-hmm. it, it fit perfectly in, like, whatever yeah. the scenario was yeah. or whatever the conversation was. It wasn't like, I don't know, sometimes you could have someone, you're like, girl, mm-hmm. yeah. come on now. Yeah. And that's never been me, right? We, we ain't talking about juice. And I'm like, well, how about Biden? Right, <laughs> exactly. It didn't give that. Not. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, it gave, no. like, it was appropriate for the time that you yeah, were talking about. Yeah. It wasn't just, like, a random thing. Mm-hmm. And I think it was so important because seeing black people at Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, yeah. that's the I first thing. I think that is so important because yes. um, I did some work there, and, like, that was, like, a big conversation with, like, 
just in general, just having yeah. black people there. So I feel like it was important. Like, if we're here, we're going to talk. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yes. like, if we're here, that like, what is the point? Because it feels fake. Talk about it. It, exactly. does. it feels fake. I'm not going to ignore yeah. that. And it's yeah. just like, I'm sorry. If you are on the vineyard, if you've been to the vineyard, we're having some real conversations. Mm-hmm. You are seeing historical sites. Mm-hmm. You know the history of, like, land ownership and buying property. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, we're on a TV show, which means we're not going to discuss and be intellectual, yeah. like, every time. Yeah. But there has to be a moment where it does not feel fake and we're just mm-hmm. placating to audiences yeah. who quite frankly only watch us for our drama and don't and, and then you're gonna trick them yeah. and give them a little bit of history in that too. The only thing though that I will say, and this is on the, no shade to the editors, y'all. But why do they keep putting those organs no. <laughs> behind you? Because that's that's I feel like at, in some in some cases yeah. it was taking the seriousness out of the Correct. conversation. Yeah. Um. But I get it. They're trying to keep it. They're trying right. to keep it light. Trying to keep the girls to watch and whatever. Yeah. But like I feel like. Yes, what you yep. were saying was so true, and what you continue to say throughout the season was so mm-hmm. poignant and so important to be heard and to be platformed. But it's like, girl, do we need these organ sounds right now? No, like, people were situa- many situa- people situa- actually online were mad. I don't yeah. even think I even took it that seriously. And I, I even said to a couple of castmates, I was like, listen, if they do this throughout the season, I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah. But it was that one episode, and, and I said, you know what? But I, th- but I think for some people, it can set the tone for what you think that yeah. person will be throughout the season. Yeah. Thankfully, people didn't. People got the opposite. Not really the opposite, but they didn't get this, like, lecturer yeah. that yes. they probably thought they would have gotten because of the organ music. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it was a little annoying at first, I admit. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. I know you're trying to keep it light, but yeah. it's actually a little bit annoying. Yes. And it also takes away some of the seriousness yes. of what you know it is being said. Mm-hmm. Um, but thankfully, they were they didn't do that the rest of the... Yeah. <laughs> thankfully, they knew not. They knew not. Cause they I would have had to write a strong word white woman letter. Look. <laughs> I what you said. Look. <laughs> My good white woman letter, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Don't play. Okay, so at this point, y'all, we're going to switch gears and we're going to play a quick game Uh-oh. to get us a little loosey-goosey. Um, we're going to go into press prefers so it's a little this or that um we'll give you two things and you have to choose which one you prefer got it but the key is now you cannot be thinking too long okay okay, okay. not not even 10 seconds okay, maybe I got like you. five i got you. seven okay um so i will jump us off okay first one sweet breakfast or savory breakfast savory breakfast a Real Housewives of Potomac or Married to Medicine? Married to Medicine. Okay, Ooh. they've been eating this season. Okay. They have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, travel alone or travel with friends? Travel with friends. It depends on the friends, but travel with friends. Okay. <laughs> okay. A Renaissance or Lemonade? Ooh, Renaissance. Mm. Okay. Good choice. A night in or a night out? A night out. Martha's Vineyard or the Hamptons? Martha's Vineyard. Period. Okay. Now, who's a better reader? Candace Diller Bassett mm-hmm. or Miss Kenya Moore? Ooh, that is good. Oh, okay. Five seconds because now. I'm actually friends with one of them, Candace Diller Bassett. Okay. Not today, Satan. Not today, neck. Not today, ankles. We don't have it. We'll get, we'll be, because, honey, her, her <laughs> baby, that's a thesaurus over there, honey. Yes. Candace be coming quick. Yeah, quickly. Like, yeah, like, that vocabulary be vocabulary. How did you think about that? <laughs> like, uh, Pink Friday or Pink Friday 2? Neither. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Wait, hold on now. <laughs> we can do this too. What happened? <laughs> what? What's Roman's revenge? Like not even Pink Friday. Like well, to be fair, I haven't listened to Pink Friday too. Okay. okay. You know what? Okay. It was. Drop, comment below. Do y'all like Pink Friday too? Are y'all? What is it? Which one? Pink Friday or Pink Friday two? I'll let y'all decide. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to say Pink Friday then, of course. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Pink Friday as well. No shade, bro. Don't eat me up, Barb's. <laughs> okay. And the last one. Now you're a man of many hats. Which we have seen literally and figuratively. <laughs> so, would you prefer a crew cuff hat or mm-hmm. a wide brim? A wide brim, wide brim always. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, Preston. <laughs> I love yes. that. Yes. Cute. Now we're gonna get into Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. Like I said, y'all did not give us a liberty of having a reunion, and we have yes. a lot of questions. The folks want to know what's going on, and the like, hasn't been any no. the streets. <laughs> we wanted a reunion too, we, to be clear. Uh, <laughs> we had stuff to talk about. We <laughs> y'all did, girl, so, and y'all did. So hopefully, season two we get that. Yeah. Yes. And Andy, let and us host a reunion. Let us, girl, like, girl. Come on, at come this on point, now. you know you're watching. Anyway, exactly. okay. So, speaking of, actually, before we actually get into the show itself, take take us back to how it even came to fruition. Like, how did y'all come together and decide that, or agree to be on this show? Yeah. Like, how did that come? So, it really, I have to thank Jordan a lot for this, and I don't think she gives herself enough credit for this. Mm-hmm. So, we all happen, not all of us, a handful of us who currently are on the show, were at the vineyard. 
like going to an all white party mm -hmm. and posted a picture at this all white party, or at least headed to the all white party. And someone who was looking, who was working with the casting director, reached out to her, mm -hmm. who she knew um, because she was also being poached for a couple other shows, mm -hmm. uh, being poached for a couple other shows. And it was like, are y'all interested in this? Let me know. And we were like, anyways, ain't real, right? Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, anyways. So we all finished partying on the vineyard, went back to our separate and respective places. And then he followed up. was like, no, I'm, okay, I know this probably sounds weird, but I'm mm. serious. Are y'all interested in this? We are looking for this type of cast for a show. And we were like, okay, this actually may be a little serious. And then they started to introduce us to casting directors. And, you know, not everyone who was there ended up making it, right? Because mm. it's like some people's storylines may not fit. It's still like a science to it. Yeah. yeah. So, but after a, what felt like a thousand interviews, <laughs> um, you know, we end up, making the show right. but it really was yeah. because of jordan's connection to one person in particular who got it started for us yeah being in the right place at the right time, mm -hmm. yeah. Every time. yeah and i think you know because people were like well how did you do it and i'm like y'all my story is an unfair story like but the reality is i also mm -hmm. think the people you probably want on reality tv are folks who are not looking yes. to be on reality yes. tv yes. so many people say like birds of a feather flock together the mm -hmm. company you keep you know Re, um, results kind of like who you are. Mm -hmm. So getting right into it, mm -hmm. um, Jasmine's husband, Silas, mm -hmm. um, he had a lot of opinions on Jordan's lifestyle mm -hmm. and her like working for Playboy and like nightlife and all of that. So how do you feel about partners judging friendships? And have you ever been in a situation where you judged your partner's friends or a previous partner or whatever? Um, and how did you really handle that? Yeah. For me, I really just believe, like, that's not my relationship, mm -hmm. right? And it's not my friendship. And so, for me, it's like Jordan and Silas aren't and weren't friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, for me, it's like that's your wife's friends. And mm -hmm. I think you have to, unless and until you see her being disrespectful right. to your partner, yeah. you kind of just have to let them be friends. Or doing something, right, disrespectful to your friend. Right. But she wasn't, right? That's right. just their friendship was different before they met and before mm -hmm. they ultimately married so, and I think he was just uncomfortable with that many times. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he even stated it, right? A lot of it was because he was going to, quote, unquote, have her out all night. Or she was going to have her out all night. Mm -hmm. And she like, your friend, your wife is a grown woman. Yeah. Like, right. whatever she wants to do is what she wants to do. Mm -hmm. So, in many ways, I thought he was incredibly unfair to Jordan. Actually, not in many ways. And always, <laughs> I mm -hmm. thought he was incredibly unfair to Jordan. I really haven't been in that situation, mostly because I tend to mind my business. Mm -hmm. um, but... And I hope I'm never in that situation, frankly. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. I agree. I think, uh, and then also, I think it was Nick that was like, they've been friends before you were even like around. Thought like, of. They yeah, like yeah. have been doing this before. Agree. Also, when you marry someone, you're marrying their friends and you should trust that the person that you are marrying yeah. has good mm -hmm. relationships with people that are that are keeping them safe, that are yeah. keeping them sane, that are keeping them, you know, together. So, mm -hmm. like, I feel like he should have also trusted Jasmine a little bit more mm -hmm. in that situation yeah. as well. I think people aren't honest about some of their jealousy of people's mm -hmm. friendships. Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of the day, and this is a conversation me and my partner talk about all the time, right? It's mm -hmm. like, if you, if you have times where I feel like you are hanging around your friends more than, like, spending time with me, then sure, that's the conversation I have. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you were just kicking it with your friends. Yeah. And so I'm just like, this is... This is a weird thing to criticize because, mm -hmm. like, maybe it sounds like you're just criticizing. To your point, maybe it sounds like you're just criticizing Jordan, but you're mm -hmm. actually criticizing your wife. Yes. Exactly. Um, yes. And yeah. telling telling her that you don't trust her yeah. to be right. an individual. Yeah. 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 I think that's super hard. And I've always been the girl, like, I'm not the person that's, like, I feel like when you're in a relationship, you still need to have yes. your own things you happen, with your, especially with your God. friends. Like, I don't want to be around you all the time Six like that. Feet, like, no. let's <laughs> miss each other, please. Yes, like, yes. I, I mean, it's nice to hang with your men, yeah. but go I mean, with your boys. <laughs> but please, like, give me a second. Go watch please a game or something. In, right. in order to have a healthy relationship, you need separation. Yeah, you I just do. do. Yeah. Um, and I've seen it. I've seen. I mean, I've been in. I've been in relationships that I have my partner just wanted to be up under me, mm -hmm. and it was an awful mm -hmm. and toxic relationship. And I had to realize that I'm just like, this is not a cute thing because you want to see me and be up under me. Mm -hmm. It's actually hella suffocating. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I think some people look at it as cute, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, baby, no, no it's not cute. Mm -hmm. Baby, get your own space. Get your own space. <laughs> get your own space. Actually, get your own girl. room. Get your Please. own room. <laughs> 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 Where is your scooter? <laughs> <laughs> 
So what I appreciated, uh, among other things about the show, is how it portrayed relationships amongst black men. Mm-hmm. Um, you all weren't afraid to check each other, be vulnerable, mm-hmm. um, and be supportive. I also personally appreciated how they humanized you yeah. and your experience as a queer person. Um, how does it feel to be wrapped up in that support yeah. and that community? And w- how was that journey to getting there? Or was it even a journey to get there? Yeah, I will say that, you know, I I really appreciated the men in, on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, because even in the moments where I would just make a joke, well, first of all, I'm just like, y'all ain't gonna check me. So, like, yeah. I, I, I'm i just like, I, y'all, none of y'all scare me. <laughs> it is right. what it is. Yeah. But they could have made things uncomfortable, right, yeah. if that's who they were, but that's not who they are. Right. They're actually just really down-to-earth men. Absolutely. Um, and so it just made it really easy. Yeah. In some respects, it made it easier being the only queer person in the house. I think in other instances, it still felt isolating Bring at times. On. Because there's, it doesn't, it just doesn't matter sometimes mm-hmm. if they're nice enough. It's just like, actually, I wouldn't have to explain the situation mm-hmm. if there was another queer person in this house. Exactly. We would just be able to get it. Um, like even when the Tasmanian Devil Phil came in the house, <laughs> there were many instances that were shown and not shown of like misogyny and homophobia. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think you know, you know, a teaser is that I had to really go off about that this season mm-hmm. um, because it was just frustrating that. Everyone seemed to pick up on the misogyny, but mm-hmm. no one seemed mm-hmm. to pick up on the homophobia. Mm-hmm. And so even to have to explain myself, I was like, what, what is this? Right. Like, if we're friends, why don't y'all notice this mm-hmm. when I talk about this all the time? Mm-hmm. And so it can be frustrating. But the truth is, there were more easy moments than there were frustrating moments, mm-hmm. especially when I hosted a pride party. Yes. And they were, like, just down with the get down. Yeah, and I was like, y'all about to have a contest. Rainbow. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love like, it. Y'all about to have a contest. Yes. Go twerk. No, I love that. And I, I definitely, I definitely get what you're saying. Um, because it is important. Again, community is so important. And having people that just get it and not having to explain it is such a thing. And I hate living in a world where everyone just not just, everyone doesn't get that it is the same thing, just with different words. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. I hate that part. But again, yeah. God gave you that battle to win it. Mm. Right. It wasn't anyone else that could have broken it down and explained to, explain it to them in an easier way. So yeah. thank yeah. you for, again, thank you for thank you. that right. representation and that yeah. visibility. There. Yeah, and I think <laughs> sometimes it's hard because even in a space of just being a black person as well, it's yes. like in like workspaces and stuff, it feels like you, like, mm-hmm. why do I have to explain to y'all? Oh like, God. y'all are not dumb. Yeah, like, like, at all. I'm You're not teaching you shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, read a book. Yeah. Read an article. <laughs> Google is free, my like, Exactly. Google like, it's free. very exhausting. But again, just thank you for using your platform and saying no. Yeah. I'm gonna speak up yeah, on do. this on this stuff because yeah. it's it's important. Like regardless, and I think people people hopefully are open to learn and like being mm-hmm. understanding and things like that. But mm-hmm. sometimes it's just it is exhausting yeah. to have to always be that person to explain. Right. And like I don't want to do that all the time. Yeah, because I feel like it was in ways that other people did not have to do on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that became a little frustrating at times. Mm-hmm. But you know, and the truth is, sometimes it's no one's fault, right? It's just yeah. the environment. Yes. So I'm like, okay, all right. Like, y'all are friends, and so I will have y'all give y'all more grace than I ever would a stranger. Yeah. But also, don't try it. Exactly. <laughs> Not too much. I'll still put you in Love that. that. Okay, so in the beginning of the season, one of the housemates, Mariah, she had an altercation with Bria mm-hmm. um, over a dog hair getting into the washer, and then it got on Mariah's belongings, resulting in Mariah being removed from the house. Mm-hmm. Um, so was there any, like, reconciliation between Mariah and Bria once they learned that Amir was the one that <laughs> really yeah. uh, was responsible for mixing Which the dog stuff? Off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't tell too much because some of this may come up. But, <laughs> okay. um, but th- not in the moment they did not reconcile. Okay. And this is the thing that I told Amir specifically. I'm just like, you were wrong. And you have yeah. to figure out a way to actually, like, address yeah, right. that. I mean, to yeah. be clear, Mariah and Bria, that was the final straw. They were yeah. already having... right. Some okay. issues. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't say it was all Amir. I think the last thing, though, was clearly, yeah. like, the final thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you have to resolve that. And pick it up your finger ain't doing it. Yeah. Right. You have to actually say something. So we may or may not see more about that. But um, okay. But yeah, but they didn't resolve in that moment at all. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I wish he would have just said, like, y'all... I did it. Okay? I said the same I mean, thing. And, he, and I think maybe it would have changed, it would have lightened things a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it know? was also awkward for me in that because I wasn't there at that moment. I was literally yeah. in the other room in a whole meeting. 
So when I get out of the meeting and I hear, it's I mean, I saw the, I saw the moment with y'all, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> right? So like this whole push that everyone's talking about, I'm like, that was it? Because I'm thinking it was like a fight. It was a right. little, like, it was a little I, one too. I, like the yeah. way when I came out and I was meeting him at the club, I'm like, what happened? Oh my God, they got into it. And I was like, maybe coming from the hood, getting into it is a little different. I'm a different right. version of that. <laughs> that. That was very basic. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I was actually a little disappointed, if I'm honest, yeah. at like the conversation, how it was directed, because it felt so amplified yeah. when it really wasn't. Now, throughout the entire season, we saw Nick. Uh, shooting a shot at just about every woman oh, in the house. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> and so all of us were gagged. Episode seven or eight at the end of the season when his girlfriend walked yeah. in. Now, be for real. Yeah. Did you really think that he was out here single? Did you know anything about the girlfriend? Funny enough, so Nick and I weren't friends before. Okay. Um, he okay. was one of the people who I didn't really know beforehand, okay. um, but which is interesting. We're really great friends now. Mm -hmm. So um, he's one of the people I'm grateful that I really did meet because mm -hmm. he really is a, a just a truly funny and good person. Mm -hmm. um, so I never knew really. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I was just hearing conversations from the people I did know mm -hmm. that he had a girlfriend. So I think we were clear he had a girlfriend. I don't think anyone thought he was single. Okay. Um, but I don't think I knew the extent of how many DMs were like <laughs> oh, yeah. he slid in until some of the women started talking to me about it. And I was mm -hmm. like, dang, he, mm -hmm. okay. And okay. do, were the timelines matching up? I can't remember. Were they? They were very consistently Ooh, around okay. the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> He's like, listen, I'm shooting my shot. No. At everybody. <laughs> okay, so we are going to get into another game. And this game is called Welcome to Bravo Land. <laughs> So basically, we're just going to kind of put out different situations that has happened on different Bravo shows mm -hmm. and different moments and kind of get your thoughts on them. Yeah. Okay. So in the last two seasons of Real Housewives of Potomac, we've seen the dynamics of Candace and Robin's friendship change. Mm -hmm. Do you think this relationship is salvageable? Do you think they can work it out? Do you think that, like, it's worth it? I don't think it's worth it, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, it, it also... I don't, I don't know if I think it's... I mean, first of all, I think everything is salvageable if two people want to, to salvage right. a relationship. Sure, sure. I just don't see it. Mm -hmm. I just see don't see it happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't either. Yeah. <sighs> I want it to happen. Y'all know, I just... I want everybody to be in peace and love and harmony. <laughs> but yeah. there are just some things you can't forgive yeah. Yeah. Um, on both sides. Yeah. And um, I don't know. The Taurus in me is saying it's not getting salvageable. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. think so. And I think, too, like, with... Candace's situation with um, Giselle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like hard for, it would be hard for me to be friends with somebody that's friends with yeah. a person that has done so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, how can you really like. Yeah. And that's my position. It's yeah. like, I, even, I don't even know how we'll be able to trust. If I was Candace, I don't know how much I would be able to trust mm -hmm. Robin, given Robin and Giselle's relationship. Exactly. Um, exactly. It feels like even if you do salvage it, there's still going to be a conversation about me yeah. that doesn't involve me. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and so I don't, I just don't see how they can resolve that. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Because I'm, I'm definitely that friend that's like, you can be friends with them, girl. Don't have anything to do with me. Do your thing. But when it starts to be someone who is already attacking me, mm -hmm. yep. then there's a difference. Yeah. Yep. I agree. There's now a difference. on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which mm -hmm. I actually just got into in the past year or two, um, and love it. So yeah. you should yeah. get into it as well. <laughs> so we've seen Sutton, one of the cast members, going on a few dates, wearing a kitten sweater, mm -hmm. oversharing a lot of like medical detail, <laughs> just personal things that we really, that you don't want to share on your first, first date, Sutton. Like, what's it giving? It is itching because I have neuropathy. It's going to bother me. What dating advice do you give to Miss Sutton as she's going through these eligible bachelors? Mm -hmm. Name them. Name them. That what? Name them. Well, name what you em. did was. <laughs> <laughs> name them. Name them. Uh, one of the best moments in Bravo history. Yes. Um, <laughs> just, you, sh just too much. Mm -hmm. There's a such thing as oversharing Bring date one and date three and five. Yes. Right. Um, I just think she's oversharing. But also, you know what? I do think there's a such thing as sharing too much, but it's also like, listen, at least you're being yourself. That's yes. what I'm saying too. Like, at least you're being yourself. Exactly. So at least I know what I'm getting right now, exactly. and I can decide if you're crazy is a little too right. crazy. Exactly. I'm saying yeah. the same thing, and, and and on the contrary to what she was even saying about herself when she went on the date with the with the guy that 
was set up by the dating coach, mm-hmm. and he was oversharing about like his mom and everything. Yeah. She was like taken aback. I'm like, girl, this right. is what you was doing. Right. Like, <laughs> you know? Y'all are made for each other, honey. Right. <laughs> That's what I said. Like, I first of all, I love Sutton. Like, no, I don't, I something too. about her is yeah. so funny to me. Like, it's she's real. so quirky, she and yeah. <laughs> she's just so funny. Her and Mary from Salt Lake City oh are just. Yes. I can't. Like, they crack me up. So, I think, like you said, I think she's being herself. And yeah. somebody will love her quirky self. Yeah. And they will love her little kitten sweaters. Yep. And her, like, well, whatever she gives, they're going to love it. For it yeah. I always appreciate people who I know I can tell is, are you. Yes. Yes. Like, that like, is this you. This is yeah. you. <laughs> through this is through. you. So, on the new season of Married to Medicine, there's been a lot of conversation around mm. quad, not taking accountability, mm-hmm. and being basically iced out by the group. So, what is your thoughts about about her being like iced out and her position Ooh. in the friend group. Yeah. I have so many thoughts that I don't even know if I can sum up. Um, because the reality is, I think the way a lot of the, I think a lot of people are forgetting what people did to Mariah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. specifically, in my opinion, what Quad was really talking about and navigating around Mariah in particular. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. felt very reminiscent of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really see both sides. Usually I'm not a both sides person, <laughs> yeah. but I really can understand some of the frustration of a lot of the women. And I can understand why Quad feels a little bit jaded based on a relationship with her ex-husband. I, there's just a lot there. Mm-hmm. A lot there. Um, and honestly, I like Quad as a, like, I think she's funny, but I've never been the biggest fan on the show. Mm-hmm. There's something that's always been a little bit too exaggerated, too, like, gay-coded <laughs> that I've just been a little frustrated by, like frankly. <laughs> um, you know, but keeping it a buck. Um, cause most people don't go around, Miss Honey, this thing, most people don't do that, right? Like, right. It, it's just not a real thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, some, I'm a little biased, yeah. <laughs> admittedly so, but I can also understand some of her frustration, especially with what she shared and what a lot of the women knew she was going through. Yeah. yeah. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, that's my only critique of this quad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she is all up in our vernacular. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree, it, <sighs> It's always an uncomfortable situation when your friends are, like, voting you out of something. Yeah. But I definitely see both sides as well. From what the ladies were saying, they feel like outside of filming, outside of the show, you don't talk to us. You mm-hmm. don't even see us. You value your other friendships more than us. Mm-hmm. And so I get what they're saying, and I get how they feel, and I definitely want to hold that. But at the same time, like, Miss Quad can have multiple friendships. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just up to her to balance them and make sure everyone feels good. And in that moment, they weren't feeling good. And so mm-hmm. I feel like about the accountability, she definitely should have taken that into, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, into context. Yeah, right. um, but they also mm-hmm. should have taken to a context that Sweet Tea, who I actually love mm-hmm. on Married to Medicine, I think she's hilarious, mm-hmm. but bringing her into this film group was very random, mm-hmm. and I feel like it gave a little bit of, like, we're going to get back at you or we're going to do mm-hmm. this, because otherwise... Like, what was the other reason yeah. to bring yeah. her on there? Like, yeah. Well, I think the rumor was that Quad allegedly was not going to come back on the show. Mm-hmm. But it was because of her. Because, oh, they, because, brought, of, because they brought her. Okay. Because yeah. I was like, well, maybe that's why they try to say, well, we're going to get your husband's yeah. ex-wife. But also, like I said, I understand both sides. But at the same time, I feel like anytime they all expressed their feelings mm-hmm. about what she Quad did, listening. she was just like, but y'all did something to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like, it was no accountability there. Yeah. And I think that's usually how she comes off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I even watch the Heavenly and Carlos King does the um, Monday after the show comes on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They do like a live and yeah. they talk about it. And Heavenly was saying like the whole like uh, funeral scene, mm-hmm. she was like, it was ridiculous. Like, yeah. she said Quad cussed everybody out. Yeah. Like, she was like, what you guys seen is not, like, mm-hmm. what really happened. Mm-hmm. And, like, I, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think it's pretty interesting, but I agree. Like, you know, I, I, I can see both sides, but Quad is definitely not taking yeah. any accountability. Yeah. Like, she's and that's just the not. thing. I'm always very weary of French, of people, but of friends, is if I say you offended me and you're like, well, you did that then. I'm like, well, why didn't you bring it up then? Right. Why are you waiting <laughs> I'm like, I'm now? not saying you didn't yep. feel harmed, but it feels like actually only doing it because I'm calling you out. Yep. Exactly. Um, so on the season finale of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Ooh. Um, it hey, was babe. revealed <laughs> that the newest housewife, Miss mm-hmm. Monica, was the mastermind behind the uh, Salt Lake City gossip blog, Reality Von Tees. Mm-hmm. Okay? The ladies all confronted Monica and made her go home. Uh, do you think Monica was wrong for starting this blog? Do you think that she was... 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can answer that. I The direct answer to me is yes. Okay. But I think there's so many other answers. There's so to many. Yes. There's so many nuances. <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, like, I, but you gotta be, you gotta be a baddie yeah. to troll the women you are now on the show no, with no, for years. Like, I think, listen, I don't know if I would be friends with her in real life. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because somebody do feel a little like, dang, okay, you may yeah. be a little bit villainous. And you need her. you need that girl. Yeah, yeah. like she, what she brought to Salt Lake City this season. I think the reunion and the finale, quite frankly, was like the best in Housewives franchise history. Yeah, outside of maybe like season nine, ten of Atlanta. Okay, like it. it it was so much. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'll give it that. Like, I have to give, because even the way, like, Heather lined it up, yeah. and the way, like, so Heather also, I think, established her icon stat. Like, I... The girls are doing their <laughs> thing, actually. But but to answer your direct question, yeah, I mean, she was, like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how I can say she was right, if right. that's word. Right, but it's also, like, legend. It's right, also, no, like, okay, right. girl, you did your big one. No, I agree. Like, I admit, I'm like, okay, you yeah. did what you needed to do. Exactly. Yeah, I exactly. agree. I think... Of course, initially, like, yeah, okay, maybe it wasn't the best and the nicest thing to do. But mm-hmm. really, it was for to take down Jen Shaw. Yeah. And like she said, the other girls, y'all just was collateral. We had to keep it up, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, see, but see, yeah. this is why I appreciated Monica. Monica posted something, and it was like, you know you got to be that girl when the people are all against you, but they don't even like each other. Mm. Right. So she exactly. was like, I don't even like each other. Mm. Exactly. Y'all are just teaming up against me, which yeah. if y'all need to do it, that's fine. But right. don't act like y'all friends now. Right. I brought y'all together. And right. I, also don't, I also don't believe that Heather just found out that day that she did a dramatic phone call. Like, I would be surprised. There's no way yeah. that you just found out. Like, you've been doing this research for months. Mm-hmm. You've been trying to get close to Monica. You've been kind of seeing her responses, and you already had the thought, of, allegedly your hairstylist told you, your hairstylist has been told you. Mm-hmm. I just think, you know, yeah. did it for the show, and it was so dramatic. Yeah. The meeting on the beach, and mm-hmm. it was just like, oh, <laughs> at the table, they're screaming at her. Like, it was so funny. Uh-huh. I was cracking up. Like, this is, this is crazy. You know what? I, you have to really, I mean, those, I mean listen, I get it around Monica. Like, mm-hmm. I think she's very hot or cold. Like, you either love her or you don't. Mm-hmm. But there was something about that moment. I'm just like, uh, listen. She owned it. it yeah. Star quality. And, and didn't care. Yeah. I mean, really. It was just like, whatever. Mm. What y'all going to do now? Like, right. Exactly. <laughs> there's something about that where I'm just like, ooh, I, I would want to, like, cuss you out <laughs> and respect you at the same time. Yes. Yeah. But. Mm. I love and, that. and that's not, yeah, yeah, she did. It was that. a lot, but that was <laughs> that was one of the best season finales in a long like, time. Because the girls are boring, yeah. he says. And people said Monica got the girls like we got to start working because y'all do get <laughs> to said, work. Yeah. Y'all ain't working. Y'all ain't she been made working. Them work. I mean, the thing is, Salt Lake City it would have struggled without her. Yeah, if people were honest, honest, they would have struggled without her. This and that's why they brought Mary back because mm-hmm. they yeah. saw that struggle that struggle happening. Mary don't be bothered. Mary is hilarious. Who girls a lot going Mary. on? <laughs> <laughs> Mary be like, don't talk to me. Yeah. Like she cracks girl. me up. I love Mary. Okay, so a last one. Um, what do you th- who or who do you think has a better style? Giselle or Garcelle? <laughs> oh, Garcelle. <gasps> I do. You know Between those two? Yeah. Yeah. I would say yes. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like, you know, y'all, I look at clothes in such a different way. I feel like they all dress for themselves. Girl, <laughs> I'm no. like, Giselle dress very, it's not bad. She just dress, she dresses as Giselle. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> you know I, mean, I, mean I, don't, I don't think what she wears is as hideous as people say. Yeah, thank you. That's well, what I'm trying so, to so say. So let me actually say this. But I think a lot of things are about how confident you are in what you're yes. wearing. Yes. I see people wearing things that I think are... For me, what I would never wear, I but the way they wear, I'm like, the way oh, they, wear, they look great in it. But I'm just like, it's your outfit, and you're not confident in it, which makes me have to think that you don't even like it. I right. think she's confident. I think both of them are very confident. <laughs> I, mean, I think in her about how she looks, her face. Yeah, she's a pretty girl. Of course not. You don't think she's confident in her? In her how could you be? I, don't think, I mean, I think. No. I mean, no? I think she knows she's a pretty girl, and she is. She's stunning. Giselle is not confident. In her. I think she knows that everybody says that. She doesn't dress nice. Mm-hmm. I think if any, even if like I feel like I dress well, but if if I was on a TV show and ev- my castmates, everybody, everybody keeps saying I don't dress well, I might question like. But well, then damn. you would, if you if you felt that way, then you would get, go get a stylist or get somebody to help. I'm you. sure right? she has a stylist though. I'm positive. Huh? I can't. I mean, t- <laughs> oh, it's the gas. This is news to me. <laughs> and horror to me. What? She I might do I, though. I feel like to be on Broadway, you like if you, I feel like you have to. No, darling. For I thought Vince, this whole I, time that she was no for Vince. <laughs> just that's going through even worse. Well, right. It gets I'm gonna be quiet now. I think Giselle just I think Giselle 
I think Giselle just give like. Like we said, like uh, I think she preacher's wife. Herself. I say that all the time. She, um, I feel like she dressed like a first lady. Yeah, like you yeah. know. And I feel like Garcelle. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Charles the first ladies out Garcelle there. We love y'all. Is also a beauty yeah, as well. Mm-hmm. And she, um, I don't know. Yeah. I see where she's going. I see where she's yeah, trying you to see do. the vision. Yes. Yeah. And she also gives like you can tell she was a fashion girl. Mm-hmm. Like if she it was for me. I mean, I mean yeah, because she was. She was a, a model. Uh-huh. You know, I yeah. can see. I can see. But I think as you, as life changes, you get older. Mm-hmm. And not to say that she can't just rank because of her age or anything like that. But I think, like, you kind of figure out what works with you. Because, yeah. I like, when I turn 50, I'm sure that things might right. change. Or I yeah, might be like, right. okay, I'm going to try this now. Like, I'm going to change yeah. it up. Like, I might not be wearing the same things that I was wearing at 21. I don't yeah. know. Not to say that she does, but I think like her well, style Well, I think it's some changed. of the housewives do. Yeah, some do. And maybe that needs to be critiqued. Because the girls <laughs> swear that Dorit of Beverly Hills is just the no. eye fashion icon. And then I'll be like watching like... she has great pieces. She has labels. She, she has, has pieces, labels. That's but she it don't put... It give a little bit tacky Maybe it's more than a label, honey. I it's think, more than a label. I think the best dress housewife is... Don't fight me, y'all. I think it's Marlo. I think Marlo Hampton is the fashion girl. Yeah, she is a fashion girl. And Jenna Lyons. I don't love every single look, but I think Marlo dresses better than a lot of yeah, the girls. She for does. For sure. She definitely does. Yeah. And some of the Miami girls. Yeah. Be, be Miami. Having, they're just putting it on. Gertie bringing it. Gertie, Kiki. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, Chris they all. A lot of, like, the Miami girls, and actually, in, in person, I would say the Dubai girls. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. The Dubai they, girls are beautiful and amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they look good. Mm-hmm. But because I think they're like obviously like only a couple seasons in. I mean, mm-hmm. hell, Dubai is really only one season at this point. Right. I yeah. think it's just you don't really compare them. But yeah. I think they actually be outdressing yeah. a lot of the so, housewives. They yeah. definitely do. So wrapping us up, um, now that you've completed your first season, your freshman season yes. as a Bravo celebrity, yes. and you are in full Bravo <laughs> stardom. <laughs> um, Again, you always seem so grounded, and I just, I love that. I love that about you. Even our, rea- our interactions now, like, yeah. I just live for it. Um, but what is one message that you would give to your pre-Summer House Martha's Vineyard fans? Like, not fans, supporters. The one that were rocking with you back in Ohio, mm. North Carolina to D.C. before you became pressing from Summer House. What, would you, what message would you give to them? And, actually, Ooh, and yeah. what do you want your new supporters to learn about you? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, so I, the one, I don't even know if it's a message outside of it is I, one, I do appreciate the support. Like, mm. I'm, maybe there's some people hating, I'm sure, you know. <laughs> and they're keeping us here. So shout up. out to them. <laughs> but, uh, but everyone, honestly, even like I still am good friends with my high school classmates. And even when we did our premiere party last year, like six of them came. Love it, love um, it. Like I still keep in touch with a good amount of people. I'm actually in the middle of planning my 20 year reunion right now. Ooh, ooh, um, yes. no, that's right. So that's my message. I just really appreciate their support. And, uh, and, and a lot of them tell me, they're like, you quite literally have never changed mm-hmm. since the second we've met. Um, and I just hope I can keep that up, right? Like, the one thing I've always prayed is I don't really believe in the concept of humility because I think it's something that's only stated to black people. But I do believe in being grounded. Yes. And and that, to me, is something that's really important to me. And I just pray I never lose that. I yes. pray I never lose sight of, like, who I've always been before any of this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone who just cared about people, someone who loves fun, shade, mm-hmm. and just staying true to who they are. Mm-hmm. That's the one message I hope. And frankly, that's the same message I would give to, like, people who don't know me and may know me. Mm-hmm. Like, don't just keep me as this reality TV person mm-hmm. um, because I think that becomes very limiting in, like, what you think we are, what you think I can contribute. Like, there are some people who I've seen say, not to me, but to other folks on Bravo, like, stay in your lane. And it's like, mm. these people are not just reality TV stars. Like, exactly. I, I know you probably think they are, because mm-hmm. that's how you were introduced to them. Yeah. But, baby, my bar license has been active for 12 years. Period. Period. So, like, <laughs> that was before you knew me. Yeah. Um, right. And so it's like, I come in with my real experiences, my real mm-hmm. self, my real personality. And you may not agree with everything, mm-hmm. and that's okay. But I'm always stay true to me. Because that's the only person I can wake up to and go to bed to every night. Absolutely. What is next for you? What can we expect Mm -hmm. from Preston? Finishing my book proposal, finally. Um, I'm so excited about that. Uh, So that's next. Season two is next. 
Do you know when season two is coming out? Brother? I wish I knew. I, what we hear is the spring. Ugh. What we hear is early okay. spring. Okay. Um, but we don't know the date yet. Okay. I wish we did because I would probably have it on this shirt right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so season two is next. Mm-hmm. Book proposal is next. I'm getting back into writing more. Um, like so, you know, I really started writing about a decade ago and I've mm-hmm. missed it so much. I probably haven't written an article in like two years. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I have one coming out soon and I really just wanted to get back into it. And again, not fall trap to like, you're just on reality TV. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so that's next for me. Um, oh my gosh, my consulting company is continuing. So my one year anniversary is this March. Yeah. Uh, really yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah. And just more clients. Yeah. Uh, and, and I guess really just staying again, staying grounded and really getting like crab legs. Yes. That's also oh, something that's yes, to come from me. We need to have a crab <laughs> leg. Yeah, like, I eat crab legs once a week. I, oh my god! I now, do you make them or do you go to the restaurant? I go to the restaurant. You know what's funny because I'm not patient enough to just sit there and wait for them to be boiling and be done. Yeah, what? I, yeah. My I, friends are like, "You must I got money." Know. I'm like, "I got a bad budget." Right. That's I what I got. <laughs> yes. that I, got I would much budget. rather go to a restaurant to eat. Them. It's because yeah. they put together the sauces, the exactly. seasoning. I can just do and obey, I don't want and my that's about it. Smell like that. I get I that very, you, as man. much as I love certain foods, like I love a fried fish, you would never have me cooking in my place. Yeah, I'm like, I I don't, like I don't want to sit in there. Yeah, well, <laughs> baby, I love a good crab bowl, whether it's being cooked by myself or cooked by some other hands. Listen, but when you cook it, let well, me know. I got, right. you, I got, you, I got you now. Well, hey. Um, so this part of the show, we do raise a glass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's basically where we just nod to someone or a group of people, whatever, that has inspired us in any mm-hmm. way, that has just, mm-hmm. you know, just, you've seen lately someone that's, mm-hmm. like, on your radar. So if you can think now, who is someone that you would like to raise a glass and just show, like, appreciation to that's made a it's little impact? a group of people. Yeah. Okay. The cast of The Color Purple. Ah, yes! Yeah, and it's not yes. even about just The Color Purple. Like, it is about how they interact Every time they're yeah. together, yeah, like every interview I look at, I just get so inspired. Yes, yes. like when they're yeah. talking, how they're like between like Fantasia. Oh my God, Dania! Oh First of God. all, yeah. love her. Whew. Yeah, but between them, Taraji, I mean Gabriella, uh, Hallie, like all yeah, of them, everybody. when they interact, it's like you can tell it's genuine. It's love. Yeah. Yeah. And and that is what I hope to to inspire upon other people. Honestly, mm-hmm. yes. I agree. I I agree. When that. I looked at all their press tour mm-hmm. interviews, um, all of them always said that the set felt different yeah. from any other set that they, that they had ever been on, and that definitely showed in those interviews because yeah. of how they interacted with each other. So I I agree. Yes, yes. who wears the glass that. too, babes? Yes, I actually also. <laughs> 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 the color purple as well, yeah. um, because again, like you said, it was super inspiring. All of the interviews I saw, all of the press I saw, I seen a lot of times where I know Taraji spoke out a lot this mm-hmm. this press tour, and I think mm-hmm. I can just see something heavy on her. Like she's yes. she's going through a lot, and you can just see it in her face. But I love it was moments not even where we can see, but it was certain angles of the interview where I seen Taraji. I mean, uh, Fantasia just kind of give her like grab her leg or hold her mm-hmm. hand or just comfort her and rub her back and I think that's all about what sisterhood and yeah. friendship is about because sometimes you can see your person struggling and you just have to give them that embrace and say I got you like yes. you'll be okay and I, I just love seeing that that yes. kind of, that really warmed my heart that warmed my heart mm. a lot well, y'all, of course, I'm going to raise my glass to our lovely guest, Preston. Thank yes. you um, for your light yeah. and all that you're bringing to this world. Um, looking at the show, it's so like cool how Seeing you be you and do you was very healing for my inner child. Mm. Um, to see someone who looks like me and is interested in some of the things that I am also interested in be so amazing and have this platform that is so deserving, um, I really appreciate that. And so I want we want to remind you to keep going, Thank that you. we're here supporting you. We see you. Uh, we see you. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, and to... Just keep doing the thing, child. Keep oh. doing the thing. So yes. we're raising the glass. Mm. Take yes. a little sip. To you exactly. and the cast of The yes. Color Purple, y'all. So I guess that wraps us up for this episode. Thank you all for watching. Make sure, well, watching and listening. Yes. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, we'll put all of the links to find Preston on social. Yes. Um, of course, his website. And you should, if you haven't already, make sure you catch up on Summer House exactly. Monthly Vineyard. You heard here first. It is coming nice. in May. 
and we'll talk with him to come back. Yes, you gotta um, come back. You know, oh, this is fun. You knew. And we gotta get into what's going on. Oh, this is yes. because yes. 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 you may see a spicier side of me. Love that. So we definitely gotta have you come <laughs> back. Okay. Definitely gotta have you come back. Okay? No, you you come but back. yes, thank you for joining us. Thank you. thank you for being here. Thank y'all for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all those things. Yes. And um, am I saying anything? Um, no, I mean, that's pretty much it. Make sure you guys yeah. subscribe. And thank you, Preston, for coming on. This is season three for us. Yes. And this is episode one. Oh, so yes. you'll be opening up for us. You'll yes. be opening up our season. <laughs> yes. yes. Open up with greatness, <laughs> honey. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. And guys, welcome to 2024. We're so yes. happy to be here. And we hope you enjoy this season. Um, yeah, so thank you. Yes. Thank you. Until next time, y'all. Yes. Cocktails, Cocktails, Cocktails and culture. Cheers. Cheers. Get it from my baby, Bob, man. What's now, y'all?